fucking <laughs> mic. Cheers, cheers to this, man. Cheers to this. There we go. Beautiful. First time doing a podcast? Yes, actually it is. Yeah? Well, it's actually pretty loose, pretty chill. We're already kind of getting a little staggy. A little staggy, a little uh, static here. Oh, that's fine. Um, New Year's, what's your goal? What's your thing? Now, I don't want to talk about a resolution, but what's a, what's a goal you got? What's something you want to change? Hmm. New Year's, that's a tough one, honestly. Uh, if I had to pick one, probably i am really got to get better at my sleeping. Sleep. Got to get better at, like, not like sleeping the eight hours, but my goal is to get better at just, like, having, like, a set time on when to go to bed and when to wake up. Yeah, dude, literally, um, going back to, we've talked many times about this Aura Ring. Um, mm -hmm. I should get a fucking promotion for them. Aura Ring, super freaking dope. Kind of works like your uh, heart rate monitors, uh, like the Apple Watches and Whoop Straps, stuff like that. It just goes on your finger. I'm a ring man, so that kind of works. But that's the big reason I wanted it, was to just to be able to track my sleep. Because yeah. I think I'm a really good sleeper. However, I'm also a marijuana user. So they always say marijuana doesn't really, it fucks with your sleep. Marijuana and all other drugs mess yeah. with your sleep. So I'm like, okay, I should kind of like see if I'm actually really sleeping well. And literally, the first few nights, I literally, I went upstairs on the few mornings after the nights, and I checked. I'm like, well, mom, I'm not as good of a sleeper as I thought I was. I sleep pretty shitty, actually. It's, my score is like really, really low every morning. Really? Yeah. Like, that's the weird thing. Like, I know somebody else who actually works out at my gym who uses one of those. And he was telling me, he was like, dude, you're going to like, you're going to see numbers that you never thought you would see for one and two. They're not going to make you happy from the start. And I was like, well, that's depressing, but not much you can do, but get better. And, and going back to you, you want to get better at the time you go to bed and the time you wake up. That's the one thing it does really well for me. And it just alerted me literally uh, about an hour ago. It said, oh, like your bedtime is approaching because it tells me to go to bed between like, 7.45 and 8.45, yeah, I go mm. to bed really early. Yeah. <laughs> I go to bed really early. Um, I've, <laughs> needless to say, I've taken some caffeine to stay up tonight. Like, <laughs> I, I go to bed really yeah. early. Um, but, uh, uh, no, and they, they talked about the importance of that. And that's what I love about their whole app. Their whole app is so informative. I, like, totally promote the Aura Ring. There's no affiliation, X, Y, Z. Um, uh, but it's a hell of a freaking product. And just to understand how you sleep, and you can measure that, you know, where's your heart rate? And then, for me, it breaks down light sleep, deep sleep, um, awake and REM sleep, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And one thing that's cool about it, uh, one guy was telling me he has the roll ring and he has the whoop, uh, wristband. He's got both of them and he's just like, I just want to see if the numbers are somewhat together. And he said they're almost identical. Yeah. The numbers are basically the same thing yeah. back and forth. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool because I thought for sure there was going to be one that was going to be like, oh, your sleep was, your recovery was like 15% while the other one says, oh, your recovery is at like 75%. Yeah. Or some bull crap number. Yeah. Just, yeah. I guess, I guess to kind of see the, you know, the average and kind of see what you're at. Yeah. Yeah. Which one, which one works better or if they even are both like janky. Yeah. Is it what do they, what do they actually work at? Yeah. Because yeah. if you just buy one, you're going to believe them. Yeah. You're exactly. Gonna if you buy one, you're, you're going gonna to believe it. it. You're works. not, you're not going to be like, call them and be like, uh, no, sir. I was sore as shit today. Yeah. This is not correct. Yeah. Like, no, you're going to, you're just going to go with it yep. and be like, okay. Yep. You're going to go with it. You're going to go with it. You're going to rock. Okay. This is right. Okay. Yeah. It, it, how, how can I, it can't argue with technology. <laughs> you can't argue with the you technology. Can't, can't, it's internet. It's internet. Internet. So sleep. That's one other goal. How about you? What's your big one? I don't know. I don't know what my big goal is. I think my huge goal is, is to remember. I think it's going back to like sleep well, but it's not sleep. It's remember to re recover. I woke mm -hmm. up this morning really emotional. Like I was like super sensitive this morning. And Lily, what did I need to do? I fuddled around a little bit. Got my grandma woken up X Y Z, and then I uh, I went back to bed. Took like a two and a half hour nap. Yeah. I felt so good. Like I have a right. Right in front of my desk there, you can see that yeah. little sticky note that's, yeah. that sits in front of my computer. And, it, and that's, that's where I go every morning. And it says, how are you recovery? So I literally wake up in the morning, right? I check. I feel my muscles. How do I feel? How are my muscles feeling? If I feel yeah. sore, do I feel good? Mm -hmm. Then I check my ring. How's my recovery? How is my sleep? How is my X, Y, Z? And then I check like my mental health. Like, dude, how am I feeling? Are you feeling crabby? Are you feeling bad? Are you feeling lonely? You know, what's going on? And then, I, and then from there, I plan my remedy. However, going back to my goal, that's my goal is to stay more on track on that. Because I just wake up in the morning. Yeah. Sometimes I get so bored, not bored, I'm just like tired and lazy and I just start getting into my day and I forget to check in with myself. Because mm -hmm. when I check in with myself, then I can, from there I can plan my recovery. That's a really good one too. Like if you think about it, how many people really wake up and genuinely think like, what mood am I in today? Yeah, nobody. That's We're not like, trained to do that. Yeah, mental health is such a big yeah. aspect on everything. Yeah, and that, dude, that's, that's the huge thing with, my, with the mental health thing. I like to say like mental fitness. You can mm -hmm. be physically fit or physically ill and be depressed. Right? Exactly, but you, but you, like, if you're physically ill, right? So your back hurts. 
then you know you you register that you say my back hurts and then you fix it right mm -hmm. we don't check in mentally no. you go i wake up in the morning i'm feeling lonely let's fix it let's call a friend let's call my parent and have a conversation yeah. nobody thinks like that no but mental but no one thinks about mental fitness they don't think about training their brain and their emotions no we're not taught that we're absolutely not taught that. no absolutely not and it's one of those things that i feel like people definitely need to start thinking about like not only like personal training like they that helps nutrition everything like that but also think about something that's going someone or something that's going to help you mentally because that is such a big thing dude and, and like a f uh not a few like most of the people that my friends that i get into working out and i'm pushing mm -hmm. them and they talk to me about it over the years they literally say the number one thing they get out of it and the best thing they get out of it is the mental health. They're like, Absolutely. Dude, it, it, they, dude, I get rid of all my anxiety, my energy. I get to like, mm -hmm. you know, pursue goals. I get to push myself each day. Yeah. I get to, you know, all these different things. And, 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 and just being physically active in general is in a mess with your... Such... Yeah. It is such a good... Chemical what's balance. the... Yeah, what's the thing that... Oh, I can't think of the word at the top of my head. What's working out and just doing something active? It doesn't even have to be lifting weights. It could be going for a hike yeah it could be doing yoga anything it releases something i can't think of serotonin or serotonin dopamine. Serotonin, yep. serotonin yeah serotonin and dopamine everything like that and it just releases that which also it plays such a big part in anxiety depression a huge, huge everything huge. ties like it's all tied together like when people are always like you'll see people like even bodybuilders you'll see bodybuilders and they'll go on interviews you'll see them afterwards they're going to be like honestly wouldn't take away from bodybuilding, wouldn't take away from looking how I looked, but I am much happier now. That's always the key thing is them saying they're much happier. And that's what I am. Like, not, dude, exactly. I was just talking to, because Josh Lonely comes over every now mm -hmm. and we were talking about fitness and he was, he was doing some back and I'm like, God damn, man. I'm like, God damn, you look good, brother. Yeah. I'm like, you look jack. He's like, he's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you and Boyer. That's why I said I was like, you and Boyer. Maybe one of the name are the only few that have really worked on yourself since high school. I'm like, he looks good. And he's like, and I'm like, and, and then there's me, man. I've I've gotten way smaller. He's like, uh, and he was complimenting me, trying to be nice. But I was like, but what he said was, he's like, but you feel better because I talk to him all the time. Yeah. Like that's what I do every day. Like I said, you talk about the scale. I'm like, all I care about is how I feel and how yeah. I look in the mirror. No, how, absolutely. That's barely how I look in the mirror. Basically, how do I feel? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Like when I was I was in high school, honestly, I felt like playing like playing soccer and everything. I felt I needed to get leaner like you. Like I was in your almost in your shoes, but the opposite direction. I felt I needed to get leaner yeah. to an aspect of where like I didn't care about getting big. I just felt like, yeah, I need to get those abs like everybody wants that everybody but, wants yeah. that everybody wants. But the thing is, is like getting those was so much harder how much better was that i like the thing is, is every day was a challenge it didn't feel i didn't feel better with it like i was just like okay i got to this point where i'm happy where like i think i'm happy but at the same time i wasn't because you only not only did you get you have to stay there and it's like having to worry about how people think you look yeah. and everything yeah. like that yep. is always dragging on you yep and yep. then finally like it took me god knows how many years just to be like I don't care. I, yeah. I don't like someone's not going to look at me and be like, nope. Like, no, no one's going to look at you in yeah. the gym. Like I was telling the biggest thing people come into it. When people come into the gym, people say like, oh, people are going to judge me. I'm like, nobody judges you. Like, no, 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 no. Nobody mature. Yes. Judges you. Nobody mature. And nobody judges nobody you. who's secure within themselves. Only insecure people are judging. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Insecure yeah. and just outright just dicks if like they're yeah. just gonna if they're gonna sit in the corner and be like he can only curl like that no nobody and you know what it is with and, and don't worry about it you know what it is it's a defense mechanism yeah it, there's dude it's this world it's this it's this world that they're everybody's afraid with people who are insecure they're afraid that someone's gonna jab them mm -hmm. someone's gonna jab them yep. first. so they 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 are already aggressive towards anybody in their daily life yeah and they they're like i'm gonna jab you first before you jab me motherfucker. Mm -hmm. bah, bah, bah. i'm gonna jab you ass like yo 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 i'm not gonna jab you brother i'm yeah, just here to have I'm a just, good time i'm just trying to do my Come thing on. and then go, like i'm not yeah. trying to start a fight here i ain't trying to is, start no fight there are like i will admit there are some people out there for sure but the thing is anybody with a right noggin in between their shoulders isn't gonna say anything to you besides like the only time the only time i will ever like sincerely there's only like two instances where i will sincerely like actually look at somebody and th like have a little judgment it is one if i think you are genuinely in good shape and i'll be like dang like that's a good that guy's that guy's big but like, judging in terms in of, of 
Yes. Not inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not judging someone as if they can't lift that much. Yeah. Yep, I would. Yep. It's if it's a judgment. It's in term of inspiration as if like I see somebody big and I'm like, like that dude works out, that bro. That dude's good. I want to look like that. Yeah. yeah like yeah. that dude's big. Nothing like, wrong with thing. that. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. And then also like the simple one where everybody I feel like in that's worked out should see a little judgment is like if somebody's doing t- something that is entirely incorrect. Yeah. And you're like, I'm not judging you as in you were like insightful like i'm not judging you as if you're wrong here i want to help you like i want to make sure you get the right form so you don't get hurt yeah yeah like, those are the only two instances where i will ever even consider looking at somebody yep. in the gym i used to use the p word but i'll use the w word but this is my line um the only the only wussies are the ones who aren't in the gym yeah I, i'm only gonna call you a wussy if you're not working on yourself yeah it i ain't, I ain't gonna judge you because you're here brother we're mm-hmm. all trying to work what's the old there's this old little line about it it's a, it's a good line it's uh making fun of some making fun of a fat person at the gym is like making fun of a homeless person at a job yeah site, right like, everybody's trying to work on themselves brother yeah everybody's trying to work on themselves my Nobody. dad my dad you saw my dad right he, he his first but, transformation yep. so he that started, was insane he started to gain some weight again yeah. and then and about a few months ago he came to me talking about how he wants to go back to the gym and that's what he told me he's like mm-hmm. but I, I think people will be looking at me i'm like dad shut the fuck up nobody you don't worry about them nobody's gonna judge you like, you're, yeah the you're thing a beast is, you're a beast go do your shit dad put your headphones on put your hood up who cares you, about yeah, them get what you need to get do get to work get what you need to get done and go like you like being that person like you're nervous about going into the gym i guarantee everybody in the gym if you ask questions they will help they you. will help they will They're help really nice people they're Dude. really good people my first semester, I had a, in San Diego State, I had a sociology class, and it was a really good class. I loved it. And my first paper that I had to write was on a, the stigma of a subculture that you're in. And so the subculture that I chose was meatheads. Okay. Literally, it was literally, the title was Stigma of Meatheads. Mm-hmm. And he gave me a really good grade. He's like, I've never had somebody write about this. And it's basically how, you know, what does the general public think of a meathead? Yeah. And then what really is a meathead? I'm like, these are some of the nicest people that you'll ever meet. These people, truly, no offense, no, no offense to us, but we've kind of been hurt. That's why we went to the gym in the first place. Mm-hmm. I was bullied. I, yep. was, I was a very skinny guy and I have a big ass fucking head. My head is a size made for like a, D, like a linebacker or a, <laughs> or a defensive <laughs> lineman, right? And I'm five foot 10. Yeah. So I got a big melon. So I had small shoulders and a lot of people were making, making fun of me. So I went to the, I just felt bullied. So I went to the gym and, and then literally grew my shoulders wider and my head looked smaller. Head never changed, still big as fuck, but uh, my, my shoulders are wider so my head looks smaller. Yeah. We're all a little bit damaged. Everybody in the world's a little bit damaged. So exactly. you know, that's, that's why we're here in the first place. That's the thing. And what sucks is like the people that don't, like the people that aren't sincerely good at talking about it. The people that like have trouble, they're like, they feel like they're alone. Like everybody and their mother's gone through body image issues. Everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. has yeah. They're like, I guarantee at one point in like somebody's life, they've looked at themselves and been like, I got I got to do something. Yeah. Like, and the thing is like, some people just feel like they're alone with that. Yeah. They feel like I'm the only one that feels this way. Like, no. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's felt like that. Yeah. Absolutely. At one they have. Point. Absolutely. They have, um, dude, talk about, uh, talk about potty, body, potty, talk about body positive. We kind of talked about the other day. Okay. About fat body positive. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Okay. That is such a hard thing to do because I am to be to. Yeah. For me, for us, for it's us, hard for us to be fat body positive. The thing is, it's like, I'm all about body positivity in the sense that yes. and you are a yourself. healthy, you are a healthy person. Yes. If you are a healthy person, you wake up with no pain. You are happy with your life. Like shit, be happy. I'm not going to judge you for that. But for the people that are borderline obese to the point where like, they go to a doctor's office, their blood pressure is just outrageous, and they're almost borderline getting diabetic. Diabetic, yeah. Yeah, diabetic issues, and it's just like they'll post pictures, and you'll see comments like, hey, like you go, you're killing it, doing all this stuff. Go, and it's girl. just like, yeah, you go, girl, all this stuff, and it's just annoying because I'm like, why are we promoting that? Like, I'm like, I'm like, Don't get me wrong. I'm happy that you're happy with your life, but I want you to see 40 I want you to see 50. Like yeah, there's some, yeah. there's some people that are just, it, it's like, I'm all about you being happy. Don't get me wrong, but be happy and healthy. Be happy and healthy. Yep. Happy and healthy. Yep, absolutely. That doesn't mean like going to the gym, doing all these things. Just go for a walk in the morning. Go for do, a simple walk. Go for a walk. Do something. 
Dude, going back to the walk thing, okay? This is my amazing thing with the walk. Mm -hmm. I was talking to, I think you actually left yesterday and I was talking to uh, Tate and Jordan about walking or XYZ. Yeah. And they were talking about running. And uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. And then I was listening to a podcast earlier and they were talking. There was two guys who are both really big lifting guys, but they were talking about that runner's high. They're like, dude, yeah. they're like, dude I love weightlifting. And I'm like I, like, I like weightlifting too. I like lifting. You do too. But like, there's something about the runner's high that is unbeatable by any other comparison oh, yeah. exercise, right? And then going back to the walking. There's a lot of scientific evidence between the walking, a, mm -hmm. bi a bipedal, and, and the movements within the brain. Yeah. Have you ever noticed when you're doing cardio and, you, and these amazing thoughts just start to come with you, especially when you it's, get into the yeah. zone? Yep. So with their theor theorizing uh, that that it, what am I getting at here? What was I talking about? I lose my train of thought all the time. Uh, you were talking about the thoughts going through, like when you're in the zone of a runner. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And talking and talking about the, that the fact that the highest. So, so. We are the only species on this entire earth that walks bipedally as their primary movement. Yeah. There has to be a movement in the brain that, uh, that is connected to the feet walking. No other mm -hmm. animal on this earth walks bipedally primary yeah. and primarily. Nobody. So there has to be a connection with the brain because you know why we developed that. You know, we evolved to mm -hmm. develop. It, it helps us run across planes. Yeah. So when those, you know, because those deer and antelope and XYZ were always faster than us. Mm -hmm. But they're gonna be huffing and puffing. So we'll keep running. We're the best yep. cross country runners in this world. So we'll keep running, we'll keep running. You'll be like, <gasps> but you'll keep going. We'll get, yeah, we'll be like, <laughs> we're coming to you. Yeah, we're coming, we're coming, At we're endurance. coming. endurance. So there has to be, going back to mental health, there has to be a connection between moving bipedally, walking or running, and your brain waking up. No, absolutely. You know? There definitely has to be, in between there, there's, there's, there's gonna be a connection. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to, uh, I'm gonna go back, I see, I hope this plays. I'm gonna go back to, um, this, this is the, from the Tim Dillon show, going back to the body positive thing. Tim Dillon, look at this man. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear him talk about uh, what we were just talking about. ...is going to a nice restaurant. It is the only luxury for the poor. And I get beaten up on fatty. I'm not fat positive, fat activist. I get it. It's bad for you. It causes diabetes. I know everybody's trying to be better out there. Maybe some people aren't, but whatever. None of us are happy being fat. That's the other thing. How many people are actually happy being fat? Not a lot. Uh, yeah, no, well, some, yeah. some people are content to be slobs. Sure, but like this whole idea that there's a lot of people being like, I'm fat and deal with it. It's just not no, happening. No, it's gross. I mean, look, millionaires are doing it, but not people on a bus. Yeah, and that's from, and then Ray, uh, Ray Kump was his friend, and he's the other guy there. There's nothing cool about it. There's nothing cool this about what, it. There's nothing cool about it at all. No, this is what I, like, this is always my biggest thing. Like, if you're, like, if you're an overweight person, I will... You still have my respect, one hundred percent. We're still but, friends. We're still yes, friends. Absolutely. But the thing is, you will have my respect until the second, like he was saying, until I hear you say the words, "Hey, I'm fat. Deal with I can it. deal with it." Yeah. Like the thing is, it's just like, why are you accepting this? Yeah. Why are you? Accepting you don't that? need to accept this. Yeah. You can get like anybody can get healthy. Yeah. Look at like me and you were both small. Me and you were both we not were, big kids. No. no we no, were not big kids no. in high school, but like I guarantee now we're pushing probably two hundred pounds. But the thing is, we're healthy. You 200. watched my video on the. You saw how small yep. I was. That was eighth yeah. grade. <laughs> Yeah, I was a teeny straight. My, Mitchell Dale always going back to Mitchell Dale. He always made fun of me. He's like, "Dude, your stomach went in." I'm like, "Dude, I know, <laughs> man. I was a small kid, folks. I was a small." Uh, Marshall Kramer. Oh no, this is probably posted on the Marshall Kramer show or the Marshall Kramer uh, website. But yeah, um, or the YouTube page. What am I saying? But yeah, that's on Marshall. Go ahead. Yeah. What are you saying? But yeah, that, like back to it. Like nothing. Like people always say, like, "Oh well, hey, I'm here. I'm just gonna live with it." Why? Why? Why are you settling? Why? What yeah. Are you why? Settling why for? you? That just shows me like. That just shows me you accepted losing. Yeah. You accepted defeat. You gave up. Yeah. You gave yes. that. You didn't even try. You gave up. You, yeah. you didn't even yeah. try. Yep. Like, literally, it's a simp. It could be as simple as like I saw one guy. I saw one guy. He was started out at I want to say high four hundreds, mm -hmm. high four hundred pounds, and he said all I did was when I went to the grocery store or I went places, I parked in the back. And so he, he walked, can walk a little bit more. Walked a little yeah. more. Small and that's how changes. He, that's how he Small started. Small changes. And that's how he started. And then he went from there to walk, just walking around the neighborhood. Went from there to getting a gym membership. Went from there to learning about nutrition. Like it all pieces together. What, what is a protein? It's a chain of? Chain of aminos. And amino acids, right? Yeah. So what is a big chain? It's a yep. chain of? Small changes. Oh, okay. That's all I was it is. Say. That's all it is. A big change is a chain of small changes. Yeah. Small changes compiled over and over and over and over and over yeah. again leads to huge results yeah exactly. huge results like that's the thing like we were talking about like the like you were talking about the tree method it's just 
taking one step at it, one branch at a time to make the tree. Yeah. Getting, I sure I like, I apologize. I know that's not how you make a tree, but you get the analogy. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Yep. Like getting all those small branches yep. onto a tree, yep. which is basically your results. Yep. Just making little connections, mm -hmm. each one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So think about that when you're starting your new, I don't like new year's resolutions, man. I don't like, I think they're, I don't like the whole thing. I don't think that you can plan. I remember, I remember one time I, uh, you know, just on my little, <laughs> I remember once I was like, oh, I need to quit marijuana. I need to take a break from marijuana. And I literally on a Wednesday, I just stopped. And I remember some of my buddies that I was living with because they were huge marijuana, marijuana smokers too. They're like, dude, I totally respect you, man. Just to be able to just do it in the middle of the week, just be like, all right, I'm picking this day and I'm done. Or literally just waking up a day and like yeah. saying I'm done. Because those guys are always planning to stuff like, I'll start it on Monday. I'll start it on the first of the month. Understanding behavior change, that's literally a lot of what my um, my major was, was trying to understand behavior change and also my communication was because the yeah. healthcare context. Understanding behavior change is really what I studied. And yeah. it doesn't work like that. You can't just turn it on. No. And like, I remember when people used to make fun of me, you, you know, you, you didn't, but uh, people that I, in high school you used to make fun of me, bro, because when we were at people's houses and everybody else was eating pizza, I would sit there with my rice and whatever, and I would eat that shit. Dude. Not trying to make you feel bad, but it's because that's what I fucking ate. Dude. And they would make fun of me, not because of me, because they felt bad. Like, oh, I wish I could just sit there and be pleasant eating chicken and rice. I'm like, I enjoy this. But they're like, oh, I need the pizza. Dude, literally, it was funny. I was literally talking to my girlfriend about this today. Your girlfriend? So oh, my God. She's over there. Guys, she's right behind the camera. But no, I was literally talking to her about it today. So like when I was trying to lean out, I cut out so much bad food. Like I cut out so much yeah. food and we would go out to, and I remember my family, we would go, we would get pizza or we'd get something and they'd be all eating pizza. And I remember I would show up with like a spinach, kale, chicken, like high protein salad kind of something. And everyone would look at me like, what you eating? And my mom even would be like, you can have a piece. I'd be like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And I was just like, I just thought I was making the healthy choice, but end of the day is just like, dang, I wish I would have had a piece. Yeah, dude, 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 dude. That's, that's an amazing thing that you and I were talking about before. And I was telling my mom that the next day that we were talking about it, um, about the, uh, if you're like the whole Panera and Chipotle thing to me as a nutritionist, right? Understanding nutrition. I think, and we both agreed that you already lost. Like you, you use the example of somebody a asking you, Hey, when I go to McDonald's, should I get the chicken wrap instead of the McDouble? Oh it's God. like, you already lost. When you I go already, out, when I go out to eat, I go out to eat, Yes, but I only do it once a month. Yeah. You Maybe. accept when you like, when people, Oh, that drives me crazy. When people ask me, because like, that what's... chicken wrap is filled with grease and oil oh yeah it's filled and, and like it half matter, the it calories is, like we were talking it doesn't matter where you go or what you get at home will always be healthier and cheaper it doesn't matter where you go i remember I, like i told healthier you i was listening to i was looking i was listening to a podcast they were talking about they were talking about sodium and they were saying like the thing is like when you make at-home meals yeah you'll never you'll never unless you absolutely eat a bowl of salt you more than likely will not meet your sodium intake yeah they said but if you go out to eat for one meal boom you will more than likely like with that one meal yeah. plus everything yeah. else you eat during that day you're gonna overtake it because they put so much stuff in that guys that i've worked at i worked at panera i worked at perkins uh i mean panera is a, a, a nationwide one but perkins is up in the midwest only it's kind of like an ihop uh, no, what are the other what are the other food places we I got we at? got we got perkins in florida uh cafe paws in becker furniture world um, you know, shit like that. So I worked in three, maybe one more place. Oh, holiday, holiday, holiday station stores. That's nationwide too. So I've been, I've been doing all of that. And let me tell you, brothers, let me tell you what they put in there with that oil. First off, canola oil and vegetable oil, the most popular things in this world, you know, high fructose corn syrup. And they dose that and everything. You think, and, and you go to Perkins, you think you're getting a three egg omelet. First off, First off, you're not even getting real eggs. You're getting it straight out of that carton. And I know they say it's real eggs. However, why is it so light? Because when I mix my eggs, it's a very, very yellow is, color. Yeah. But the stuff that comes out of the motherfucking carton, that shit's like white yellow. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on here, brothers? This, yep. ain't, this ain't natural. So, you know, we got an issue going on there. Mm -hmm. number, n number uno, 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 uno. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, they just don't, literally, so... Uh, Let's just do the Perkins one. So you get an omelet. I saw these fuckers literally douse the griddle with like probably five tablespoons of oil. And then they 
dump that ca- that carton of eggs in there, and then you know, do- do- you know, li- uh, layer with cheese and ham and everything, and, and it seems all good. Then they roll it up, and it looks all nice, and you think you're getting all healthy. And if you were at home, it'd probably be like what a 350 calorie omelet. Yeah. But there, it's probably 900. Oh, no yeah. shit, and it's probably 900. That's why it tastes so different because it's filled, lathered with oil. Oh my god, and yeah, the, the funny thing is, is like you see the cow, like you see, and you're like, they have the macro breakdown. But I'm like, dude, just for just for a giggle, put sugar. Put how much sugar you put on each one. Like they, like I know, uh, if you look up a uh, calorie breakdown of McDonald's, if you click, like, I remember somebody telling me you click on their website. I believe they'll have this. They'll have everything that they have, and then on the sandwich breakdown, they'll have the calorie intake. Yeah, sugar is outrageous. Yeah, like not even just like regular sugar. It could be anything. Yeah, like any artificial thing. And I remember I was listening, I was listening to a podcast today. You know, uh, what's it? The sugar the the actual plant that makes sugar. I can't think of the word of it sugar right now. Cane? Sugar cane. So they were saying for artificial sugar, it would take uh, eight feet of sugar cane just to create enough sugar to get in one can of soda. Eight feet of sugar canes. See, evolution kind of fucks us, folks. Why does sugar taste so good? It's because it was in scarcity most of our existence so that's why it tastes so good why does animal meat taste so good it's because it was in scarcity you either killed the deer you sk- you vouched that deer you ate it up like a mother freaker and then the next day you had to wake up and go hunt again if you don't get a deer you don't get a deer that's why meat and yeah. sugar taste so good to us because mm-hmm. we've evolved to think they're in, in, in scarcity. Yep. So now a thousand years from now they will not be as addicted to sugar as they are now however no. <laughs> sugar will evolve Yes. So oh, yes, absolutely. They'll be addicted to the new sugar, but the They'll sugar be addicted now, to the, new stuff. the new sugar won't be able to do anything. Don't like think of like marijuana users. If you try, mm-hmm. if I, right, now, right now, if I was gonna smoke that weed, that grass that my mama did back in like ninety, or, no, not my mama, but you know, mama's age back in like ninety and eighty five. Come on now, I ain't getting nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, what's the hell? This shit. That ain't shit. You know what I mean? It's evolved tenfold. Yeah, and it's funny because like sugar like has the same aspects in your mind as. Drugs as do. drugs do. As drugs do. And they were saying, I remember uh, reading something. If you give, so if you give like us, like obviously with us, we'll, we're able to handle like if we have a candy bar or something, we'd be fine. We'll handle it. We're, we've adapted to it. Where if you give a child a candy bar, he'll be off the walls. Off the chart. Off the chart for a couple yeah. hours. But after that crash, that is the number one kid you do not want to be around. He's yeah. either that kid is either going to be because the of the grumpiest, withdrawal. Yeah, the yep, withdrawal. Yeah, that kid's either going to be the grumpiest little thing on the planet, or it is just going to need more. Yeah, and that is how and that's that's the sucky part about sugar. It's so addictive. It's like so that. addictive. Yeah. It's so yeah. addictive. Is like it, that. You, you, yeah, everybody always goes to alcohol, tobacco, and then you know I don't know marijuana and X Y Z drugs. I'm like, bro, let's talk, sugar. Let's talk about is, sugar. Is okay? the sugar biggest, is the biggest vice in it's, all of existence. It's terrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. And, and, and that's what mine is too. I thought for years. Um, you know, I thought for years my coping mechanism was marijuana. And then, you know, I had some times with alcohol. I'm like, maybe it's alcohol. You know, I'm like, I drink a little bit of alcohol. Sometimes I'm sad. X, Y, Z. I'm like, no, it's not alcohol. And then literally years came by and I'm like, no. Because whether I smoked or whether I drank, right, it wasn't always both. It usually was never both. It was one or the other. However, what was there every single time? Food. Yep. She ass food. Donuts, mm-hmm. cookies, whatever made yep. me so happy. And going back to serotonin and dopamine. Both neurotransmitters. Dopamine is Mother Nature's universal, innate reward system for all animals. Yep. However, this is the bad thing about it, is that it can be easily tricked. It oh. can be easily tricked. It's a reward It's a reward um, neurotransmitter that is basically telling you you're on the right path. Because daily activity, so AKA working on yourself, getting up and you know foraging for foods, going for the hunt, right? Those are all supposed to be releases of dopamine. It's supposed yeah. to make you pleasurable. You'd be like, yes, I enjoy having a conversation. I enjoy waking up and doing yep. this. I enjoy working out. I enjoy just- And that's the hard part about sugar. It almost like tricks it. Almost is like, no, this donut, this will make you happy. Better, it, 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 and I was talking to my mom about this today, right? Think about how happy you were as a kid just to wake up. You're like, get up! You're telling the parents, like, get the fuck up. Let's play, man. Today's like a new Christmas day. morning. Today's every morning was like Christmas morning. <laughs> like, let's get up and play, baby. Right? They were always so fucking yeah. chill. It's because that's how dopamine is supposed to release. Literally mm-hmm. just waking up and seeing other people, con- conversing with other people, you know, working on yourself, foraging, hunting. That is all supposed to release dopamine. However, what is more powerful than any of the daily activities? 
drugs. Alcohol, marijuana, sugar, sex are all drugs. Everything. They're drugs. It changes the chemicals within your body, right? That's mm -hmm. the definition of a drug. It's something that came to changes the chemical in the body. It's basically everything on this earth is a drug. Yeah. And we remedy with certain drugs to make us feel better. And nothing that you do, so conversing, you and I have this conversation, mm -hmm. um, working, working out or going to work and you know, getting, making money, yep. none of that is going to make you feel better than drugs. No. Drugs win. So no. it's easy to trick your reward system to think like, oh, that's how I'm on the right path. Yep. That makes me happy because the right path for your body is this homeostasis, but we kind of think of it about it as happiness, right? We, yeah. we want to get to happiness. Drugs yeah. make us happy. Oh, absolutely. Drugs make us happy. So yeah. I'm talking about food and sex as well. They make us happy. Mm -hmm. Real happy. Yeah. And then the more that makes you happy, the less this simple conversation makes you happy. I know. It's just, it's, it's so hard to just like, and also taking your mind off of it. So like the people that are like, I'm cutting out sugar. The thing is, is like, you're going to go through withdrawals. Withdrawals. Nasty. Nasty withdrawals. withdrawals. Yes. Physical, like, mental, emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not. And then the thing is, it's like, you're not even going to realize it. Because you're going to be like, I'm just cutting out sugar. What's so bad about it? And then you go through it and you're just, you don't know why you're in this mood. And the sad thing is, is like nobody, like how many places do you know actually promote sugar as being a bad thing? None. None. Exactly. None. So why would sugar, cut, cutting out sugar, be the first thing in your mind it's, to think? It's actually the trick. I want to go back. I know you don't agree with this, but I want you to look into it just to see it. You were talking about almond milk. Almond milk is not a healthy alternative. It is juiced with sugar. It's, that's why it tastes so freaking good. It is soaked almonds in water. Why would that taste good? Sugar. That's all it is. You literally break, yeah. you smash almonds, you soak them in water, drain that, and then you mm. add sugar to it and it tastes good. Otherwise, you'd be tasting almond water. Yeah. <laughs> that would not be good. No. It tastes good because of sugar. I promise you. Oh, yeah, I believe you. The only thing is I'm, I'm lactose intolerant, yeah. so I don't, so I don't have get have something. I, I got to have something. Gotta have something <laughs> I'm the same way. I, I, I'm not lactose intolerant, so I have my vitamin D milk every fucking day, and there's no way I'm ever losing that. I love it. No, I, got, I don't got a whole lot of options, so that's the only sugar I take. That's the only sugar you take. It's not even almond milk. That's the thing, too. That's not, it's, it's not even almond milk. It's almond beverage, more likely. I know. It's funny. And they put, like, words like, they put, like, unsweetened. All those fake words on there. Here's the breakdown. Why didn't I get the full, I didn't get the full refund? We're letting you know to proceed your refund to 1073. What about the shipping? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, dope, 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 man. I got a refund because this shit was late. So maybe I can get some more refunds on that other shit. We talking to Amazon. Amazon's the plug. Yo, let's talk about Amazon, man. Amazon's the plug, baby. Amazon's the motherfucking shit. It is. You like Amazon? Amazon Prime is the Lego. shit. It is nice. The shit. Um. I'd want to see a statistic on how many Christmas presents so this right year here. were bought. So right here, man. Almond milk. So one eight one eight ounces, sixty calories, four gram, three point five grams of total fat. Six grams of carbs, which is five total sugars, one gram of protein. That's mm -hmm. not healthy. No. That's not healthy. Milk would be no. 12 grams to eight grams of sugar to, depending on your, whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever your um, percentage of milk is. But uh, no, fuck almond milk. I, I'm not a fan of it. It's not healthier for you. But yes, I'm going to have yeah. milk. You're going to have something. to Yeah. You like cereal? Yeah. Oh, of course. I'm a huge cereal guy. What's your cereal? Dude, oh my What's god. Your What's your top 3? What's your top 3? What's your top 3? Oh, dude. Okay, if I'm if I'm actually if I'm absolutely pigging out, if I'm absolutely going to town, it's got to be Reese's Puffs. Reese's. Bro, really? if I'm like if I'm having a day <laughs> You're where a chocolate I'm like, guy, you a chocolate guy? Bro, yeah. If I'm having a day where I'm just like I need to have I need to have a bowl of cereal. Like this is like cuz you know like sometimes you're just like I haven't eaten anything bad. Like, oh, yeah. Why, yeah, why, not? why not? I'm going to have a I'm going to have a good time. Yeah. Reese's Puffs. Reese's. Are always, dude, that's the way to go. And what else? What else? Dude, I don't even know. Reese's, Reese's that's, a, that's a popular that one. one. That's a popular one. I think mine are, mine are three. Mine are three that I always come back to. And it's uh Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Lucky Charms, mm -hmm. and Fruity Pebbles. Those okay. are the ones. I'll, or 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 the Captain Crunch. Berry I was gonna say between. I would do Captain Crunch too. The, that's the, gotta the, be a the number Captain, two. The Captain Crunch Berry. The thing about that is that fucks up the roof. The roof of your oh mouth. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Dude, if you didn't like go, th if you didn't go through pain as a kid, yeah. just eat a bowl of Captain yeah, Crunch. Yeah, you're gonna dry. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't even like. Don't even add the milk. Just dry. You yeah. will rip the you know front of your you know what mouth. Is, you know what is one of the best cereals? Dry just to eat in cups is Frosted Flakes. That's Such facts. a good cereal. If you're facts. like going on a hike or something, man, put some Frosted mm. Flakes in a bag, bro. Ooh, 
Ooh, that is fun. God damn, that shit's good. Yeah. God damn, that oh, shit's good. 100%. Sugar's bad. Carbs are the enemy, Boyer. <laughs> Don't you know that? <laughs> War on carbs, man. Don't you know that? Oh, yeah, of course. What's your thoughts on that? You kind of talked to me a little bit the, uh, the other day about it. Car- I, I as, agree with you on As it. carbs being the enemy? Yeah. I got to, that's. Got to disagree. Yeah. Like, I mean, it all, like we were talking about, like, it's all about your environment, like, and all about how, like how you were raised, like where you were raised yeah. is a big thing that people don't ever think about. But for me, it's like, okay, I will admit like some carbs aren't the best. Like yeah. if you have like full on white bread, if you have bad carbs, obviously those are not going to be good for you, but you do need certain carbs to create ATP, to create glucose, to create energy for your body. Like you need like oats potatoes anything like good like natural carbs that'll absorb throughout your body correctly Mm -hmm. but at the same time of course there are bad carbs out there just like how there's bad fats there's a lot of bad there's a lot of bad everything but that's that's like i always say that's my opinion on it like i don't necessarily always quote carbs being bad They're, they're not they're not bad there are bad carbs but i definitely recommend them in people's diets for sure yeah, carbs. It's crazy because we talked about uh, gluconeogenesis, which is basically the process of turning a non-carbohydrate molecule into glucose, which is the simplest form of all carbohydrates. Yeah. And your body will do that with everything. It'll turn protein and fat mm-hmm. into it because glucose is the easiest source that we can burn. Yeah. Why would it? Why would it want to burn the you know nine calories per gram of fat when it's easier just to break down that glucose yeah. and and get that immediate energy, right? So oh. there's no way carbs are the enemy. No. Carbs. For me, I, this is how I believe. I believe in a high-fat diet and a high-protein diet. I believe in that, and I believe carbs are something that you utilize as talking about waking up each morning and yeah. being like, you know, what's the day going to be? So if I wake up in the morning, I'm like, yo, today's going to be a strength day. I'm going to add some carbs. But if I go, yeah. hey, man, today's just going to be a, a nice little hike and then some yoga. I'm probably not going to have very many carbs at all because mm-hmm. use carbs as a tool. If you're an athlete and you're not using carbs, what are no. you doing? Dude, it, is, it is mm-hmm. shown in many studies, and you can see it on the field. Carbs, uh, athletes that use carbs are the better performing athletes. Oh, 100% because you have more energy on the but field. But you have to prepare that though, right? Th- there's, a oh, yeah. there's a difference between a 9 to 5 and a sports person. Persons mm-hmm. who are in sports are trying to be optimal performance at all times. Yeah. A 9 to 5 should not eat like sports people. No. You're no. not trying to be optimi- p- optimal no. performance every day. But like, an athlete when I is. See, when I see videos of uh, – when I see, do you ever see the videos online? They're like – I'm trying to like a twenty like a twenty four hour challenge. I'm trying to eat JJ Watt's diet. Yeah, I'm yeah, always yeah, like, yeah. why? I'm always like, why? Like, here's the thing: the rock. Obviously, diet, yeah. one one day you're not gonna do that. But if you train your body over a year's worth of time, train. If you train your body over a year's worth of time, yeah, you probably could get closer to it. I'm yeah. not saying you're gonna do it, but you're gonna get closer to it because your body's adapted to somewhat of that lifestyle. Yeah. You're not going to do it in a day. No. You're not. No. Like, that man eats outrageous and amount of food because he has you, and to. And if you do stuff it down, that's what's going to be. Stuffing it down. You're yeah. going to be like, oh. You're just going to be, like, borderline throwing up yeah. trying to stuff down another chicken time. breast. I did I did one 10,000 calorie in my life challenge, and that's what people of his size eat each day. Yeah. And it literally, to the last minute, me and oh. Jack me and Jack were scarfing bacon. We had a scarf down. Bacon oh. wasn't going down easy. Bacon was oh the last thing we ate, and that wasn't going down. It breaks down to fat. It literally melts in your mouth, and that was it. tough to fucking put oh down. God. So hard that to put down. That just hurts me to listen yeah. to. Dude, it was so tough, and I'm like, why? Why? Like, That's the huge thing, man. It's like, why are you watching? You were 9 to 5 right? You're an accountant. You work 9 to 5 as an accountant. Why are you going onto YouTube and looking what Arnold did? Arnold's not a nine to five accountant. He was a professional bodybuilder, or, uh, a professional actor. You know, he uses you, his body professionally. You know the what's his name? He's a bit like one of the best strongmen ever. Something Shaw. Oh, Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw. Brian. You, Brian. Brian, Brian, Brian Shaw. Shaw. Did you ever see oh, his Colorado. video? Did you ever see his video on what he eats in a day? Yeah. That was. I, I, I know his deal. I know his uh, str- his nutrition coach. So mm-hmm. his nutrition coach. His, his nutrition coach also is the same coach for uh, Hathor Bjorkinson, who's Thor. He's the mountain yep, from. Yep. Uh, th- those are the best two probably in the oh, last God, yeah. decade. Oh uh, God, Same coach, Stan Efferning. Same coach. Yeah, dude. I watched a YouTube video on him. I've literally watched it like twice, like two, three, two, three times. Brian Shaw or Hor- uh, Thor? Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw. I watched his YouTube video on him eating in a day, yep. and it physically made my a stomach hurt. A lot of hurt. beef, a lot of rice. Oh my a lot. God, dude, that man ate. Well, like, the thing is, is, like, in the morning he wakes up. He's just like, all right, I like to start off my day. I think it was, like, eight eggs or something yeah, like that. And I'm yeah, like. Yeah, It probably was. It probably was a dozen maybe even. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, probably, like, something time. like that. Something like that. And then also on top of that, you had, like, a protein shake Yo. that was, like, a 1,000 calories. I'm like, 
dude, that like there, right there, I'd probably be like, I'm good for the day. Honestly, yeah. that would hurt me. And that as there's some people so not ignorant because ignorance is knowing but then just ignoring but naive they don't know you don't know what you don't know there's some no. people who are so naive that they see that and like oh that's what i should do that's something to do get big it's like no 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 no, no. he's six foot six yeah. 400 oh pounds and then we talked that's not what you need to do brother you're yeah. five foot ten 180 and soaking then, wet i remember we talked about a little bit ago about how people are how people do that and they think like when we were talking about like making nutrition like making a nutrition prog program for example a basketball player the thing is is just like what kind of player is he? Is he Shaq or is he Kobe? Like yeah, those are yeah, two yeah, different yeah. meal plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are two totally different meal plans. Shaq would not be eating the same thing as Kobe. I get it. They played the same sport. Both professional basketball players. Both yeah. professional basketball players. Yeah. Both have somewhat of the same schedule. They need entirely different foods. Yeah, absolutely they do. Absolutely they do. And not even just that. We talk about how, you know, because um, that's my huge thing now is going to be promoting eating like your ancestors. And I'm reading yeah. the Carnival Cola by um, Dr. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul Salandino. And, uh, you know, basically, I'm not going to ever write a, a dietary plan or a nutrition plan for somebody until you have a genetic test. I want to know exactly where your great, 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 great grandfather and mother came from because that is yeah. how you should be eating. You should be eating the foods that they ate because why? Mm -hmm. Your digestive system, your brain, That's everything how that, that is, is the made one thing. to eat that food. That is the one thing yeah. that you got from them. I remember we, when you talk about thinking about, like, let's say you were adopted. Yeah. You were adopted. You're going to gain their personality. You're going to gain your adopted parents' personality, but you are not going to gain their their genes, their, their chemical genetics, nature. Their no, chemical no, nature, you are everything. Nature and nurture, they're, they're both you're very, not, very important. You could, be, you could be born, let's say you were born in uh, Africa. You were born in Africa. The Congo. You were adop yep, Congo. You were adopted by a family in Minnesota. Yep, Minnesota. Minnesota. You are not going to need to eat the same food yeah, you're probably going to act a lot like them just like dude this is what i use this is what i use and this is not racist anything, but um there's a reason that uh black folks go to different barbers people who know how to work with black hair mm -hmm. black hair is different than white hair it's really thick and it needs to be done differently yes so does your nutrition you yeah. cannot eat why how, tell me this tell me this folks how could me who somebody's great 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 grandfather and grandmother were born in you know Scandinavia, were born in Finland, Norway, Norway, Germany, wherever you know Scandinavia is X Y Z, right? Why would I have to eat the same way of the person whose great 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 grandfather and mother was born in the Congo? Yeah, literally with animals everywhere around you, you literally need to. You need to rely on your physicality to survive. Yeah. They are going to be bigger human beings. They are going to be stronger human beings because the environment that they live in, yeah. they evolved and adapted to being they, bigger people. You Why eat. are Russians bigger than most people in, 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 in on all of Europe? Yeah. Because it's so cold. You need to build your body to, to, to physically um, yeah. you know, adapt to your environment. Yeah, it's it's just one of those things that's like... People you are have so to, subjective. No, and the thing is, is like they ate... We need to start eating like how I remember I saw something they said you need to eat how your ancestors survived. Like obviously my ancestors weren't Jay chilling at a McDonald's getting a McChicken. No. No. They ate what they needed to. They went out, they hunted, they got food, they came back. And that's what they ate. Yep. Exactly. That's I obviously our bodies adapted our bodies adapted because we don't need to do that. Nope. We don't Not need no to. More. It's too easy. I remember, I don't know if I was talking to you about this or I heard this somewhere. The reason why, like, a lot of people get, like, upset and stuff like that, they lose a lot of, I'm um, trying to think of the word, they lose a lot of need, like, willingness to do something because they don't need to. Willpower? Willpower, yeah. They lose a lot of willpower. And yep. it comes to the same thing as their nutrition. That's yep. why your nutrition lacks because you don't need to go out and kill a deer for dinner. No, you don't need no, to. You can walk over to Walmart nope. and grab a whatever you want we talked about this the other day when we were, when we were talking about this topic yeah. about matthew mcconaughey and everybody knows his uh oscar winning performance as dallas buyers club when he lost he went down to 135 pounds he lost like 60 pounds he was on the joe yeah, rogan was he, he, was was on the, he, was on, he was on the joe rogan experience about uh three months ago two months ago whatever and he was talking about his new book green lights shout out to that um and uh he was talking about joe asked him how did he feel what was your energy like when you were cutting on that weight he's like bro the first few weeks when i start when i after i started losing 10 pounds and then you know everything more the more and more energy i had and then joe this is anec anecdotes obviously it's not nothing proved by facts but i would relate the same way and it makes sense and evolutionary psychologists and biologists would also agree that there's some merit to his thought here his anecdote here and he said that uh, he said he's like uh the more that i lost the more energy i had each morning and, and joe's like why do you think that he's like dude well, well, think about it 
Your body is like every morning. Your body needs food. That is our number one. You want to talk yeah. about happiness? That is the number one thing because you need to have food to survive. Yeah. Food and water. So when you don't have that promised, you're going to wake up hungry. Right? Oh, absolutely. Talking about, talking about wanting a goal in general. Yeah. You need to be hungry. Yeah. you got to have drive and passion to achieve that goal. And if your goal is to get food and you're hungry for it, you're going to get it. Nobody's mm -hmm. hungry. They no. get physically hungry, but they're not hungry, hungry they with willpower. That, they don't have yeah. that drive. They don't have that drive, that willpower, because mm -hmm. it's right at Walmart. Why not just go to Walmart and pick up a chicken? I don't, yeah. have, to go, I don't have to go hunt and kill a chicken. I just go to Walmart in a little styrofoam package, and I can pick it up. Yeah. It's too easy. You're not going to be hungry. No, you're, you're not, not going to you be hungry. You're not going to have that drive that, they, that our ancestors had. Exactly. Dude, you're not. Right? Riddle this. There's this psychological debate that there's two reasons to live. There's basic survival. You can choose to just basically wake up, eat food, and survive every day. Or... You can create a higher meaning for yourself, and you can go through a creative route, whatever that is for you. Some people sing. Some people do podcasts. Some people write. Some people work in social work. Whatever you do, it's a creative route. Mm -hmm. If we're making our survival easier, which is cool, that's okay, but that gave everybody purpose in life. You literally just yeah. woke up. Like you said, you just woke up. You're like, all right, I need to go get food. You got food, ate food. You had a little fight with it. You went to bed. That's, you had no you're other done. worries. There was no other worries each day. No. Now, we make that so easy. So there's so much more time in the day for you to sit and think. And that's why people spiral into all these other thoughts and anxieties. It's like, yeah, yeah. move. If you just be creative, I really think most of your problems will be solved. L you yeah. just, if you're sitting still, your mind's going to race. That's, go do something. That's the thing. Like That's the hard part. It's just a matter of creating a healthy like something like i always like i always tell people i'm like when i talk about when i talk about training it doesn't have to be weightlifting find something that you enjoy like anything find anything it could playing be basketball playing basketball yeah. anything like running you with just, your dog whatever you could be if making a puzzle sure. makes you happy go for it by all means do it but find something that makes you active yep. like like if you're gonna make a puzzle do that Take a break every 20 minutes. Go for a walk. Yep. Go Do for a walk. Do something. Like, yep. it doesn't have to be like, when you say, because like we talked about this, like when you say the word exercise, it scares people. Yep. Because when you say exercise instantly, you think of, oh, lifting. No. The one, going back to small changes, a, ch a chain of small changes equals a big change. One of my little thing was I get an hour a day of, of watching something, like an hour a day. Mm -hmm. Anything past an hour, I have to be biking or treadmilling while watching yep. that. That is the one change. So if I want to watch, you know, I get one movie done, I want to watch another movie, I have to be on the treadmill or the bike in order to watch that movie. Small, simple change. I can still mm -hmm. watch, I can watch movies all day, but I got to be doing it on the treadmill all day. Okay. Got to be doing something. You yeah, can't that's just, smart. You can't just sit around. Little small freaking changes are going to lead to the big things. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I literally think there's a lot, and I know it's just anecdotes, but dude, just move. Just move. Just get up. Dude, just, just freaking move. I, I, I really feel with you. Right? People always go like, oh, my girlfriend broke up with me. So what'd you do? Oh, I just worked a lot to keep my mind occupied. I don't think that's – you have to take this with a caveat, right? Don't do that to – and never get back to your problems. But if you just need to stop thinking, just move. Work and move, yes. You need to sit down and think that. You need to work out your feelings and but understand yeah, how you feel. Fine. But – just move. Everybody, there's got to... Like, if you feel sad or anxious, just move. And then, it, and then once you feel better, you know your serotonin and dopamine start picking up, then come back, sit down, and be like, so why did that make me sad earlier? Why did that make me mad earlier? X, Y, Z, you know? Yeah. It's just hard because when, like, it's so hard for people to, like, find something. Like, the thing is, is, like, people don't understand. Like, there are literally thousands of things you could do. Like millions, millions, millions of things. Millions. Millions for of things. For real. Yeah, there's so many things you can do. It could be, like... If you don't want, like, oh, like, I don't really want to go for a walk. Okay. Stand up a lot. Yeah. Just, like. I don't know. Oh, stand up. Well, that's right. Just, like, do, like, stand up, sit down, like, five times. Increase that every single time. Do that as many times as you want. Do, like, do something. It doesn't have to be, like, excruciating. It no. does. It should be something that you look forward to. Yeah, I remember my dad, he wanted me to post this video because he saw me doing it for a while. And he's like, he's like you should post a video to show people that. Because I like to watch, going back to TV, I like to watch, like, crime stuff. And, like, he'd always see me watching crime. But then when it went to commercial or whatever, I know people have said this before, but I'd drop down and do planks, push-ups, sit-ups, X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then the show would come back on, I would stop. Or if the show was back on, then I would stretch. So okay. then when, in the commercials, do some more push-ups. And then for the 10 minute of the show, I would sit there and stretch. You know, just doing mm -hmm. s literally just small freaking changes. You do not have to be in the gym for three, four hours a day. Yeah. You, you literally just have to be atten intentionally active every day mm -hmm. for 30 minutes. I and remember, you will literally change your life. Oh, yeah. I remember when I was in high school, literally, I remember I always made a regimen before I go to bed. I would try and do 50 sit-ups and 50 push-ups every day. And it just became a habit. 
very it's simple. Just yeah. Simple. Like very obviously simple. you can start simpler than that even, but like it was just something for me to do something before I went to bed. It was like one of those things where it was like, if I didn't do that before I went to bed, I would be like, it's oh. a failed day. I'd be like, damn, like I forgot to do that. It's a but failed like day. every single day I did that. And then that increased me to going to the gym. And that also increased me to finding something that I absolutely love doing. Mm hmm. Small changes, it's a chain of them that leads to big change. I don't believe in, in resolutions because uh, you, it can't just change like that, right? You know the times you've had big change in your life and it, it came not when someone told you to change. It came when you finally wanted that change. And you're not just going to want it because it turns January 1st. You're not just yeah. going to want to change because it turns January 1st. No. Look deep down. Occupy yourself when you need to occupy yourself, but occupy with a means to an end so you can just get all that energy out so you can actually sit, to, sit with yourself and reflect upon your thoughts in a more clear mind. And you can think things out. Yeah. That's really it. And that's what I prescribe to anybody looking forward to. Any, any last things? Any, 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 any advice to anybody that, you know? Ooh. I love hearing advice from everybody, man. We, nobody's smarter than the other, but we all have advice we can give to each other because we all struggle. And we all have anecdotes that can help somebody else out. Advice? Um, find, find, something you do, find something you love. That's always my best that's one. A, that's it's a like great find, one. It's like find something you love doing. It's so cliche, but it's just real, bro. It's real. It, it it's really real. Is. Like if you find something you love and you get good at it, you'll feel better about yourself for doing it. And, and you will. The thing is, it's like not only that, you'll love to – like I'll know if like somebody says like – I'll know, you know, if somebody like genuinely loves something, do, loves doing something because they love talking about it. Yes. Yeah. You can hear You can hear the enthusiasm they're, in their voice. Yeah. Happy about and, talking. And about there's it. not one human being that does not have, it, like I said, it can be a million different things, but there's not one human being in this world that there's not something that makes them feel that way. Yeah. Find that rock with that. And, but also said like, realize that you want to change exactly and, and, and also realize that just because the clock's changing, it's not going to push the change for you. So don't beat yourself up. When two weeks go by in January, you're like, I don't really want this yet. It's not your time yet. No. Keep thinking. Keep reflecting. Keep thinking of, like, why don't I want this change yet? Because it has to happen internal within. Yeah, absolutely. Where can they find you? Um, Find me on Instagram. My Instagram is lbfitness at uh, 21, I believe. Uh, look for me at that. Or if not, my other Instagram is... Let me look, actually, real quick. His name is Logan Boyer. Yes. Um, so for me, I think this is posted on the Marshall Kramer channel, but I also have the Marsh channel, just just Marsh, M-A-R-S-H-A. Uh, yes. So if you want to find me on Instagram, it is lboyerfitness underscore 21. Follow me on Instagram if you need any help, anything nutrition-wise. If you're looking to find something that you want to do, whether it's working out, just send me a DM. And you already do this professionally, right? Tell them about that. I do. I work as a professional personal trainer as, and a professional nutritionist in Orlando. Yep, in Orlando, Florida. He's here back home in Minnesota for the winter break. So we started to sit down and have a little conversation. That's annoying to hear that. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. Um, they won't hear it, thank God. But, uh, but yeah, uh, he was just made a uh, nice skit the other day, a little lifting skit oh, last that night. Fun. That was actually kind of funny. That was funny. Um, a little long. I'm beat up from it, but it was really funny, and that'll be well as post on the Marsh Channel, the Marshall Channel Nutrition, the Marshall Kramer Channel Nutrition, the Marsh Channel Comedy. Just trying to bring a little smile and laugh in your life. Um, I don't think there's anything else, man. Happy New Year! Yeah, New yeah, Year's Eve, baby. New, year. New Year's Eve. The boys coming over. We got you know Gabby, Logan's uh, girlfriend in the back here, and uh, we're gonna go hang out with them and have a good time. I hope you guys have a good New Year's Eve. I know you won't be hearing this on New Year's Eve, but. Uh, yeah, thanks for sitting down with me, man. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it was fun. And let's just go, uh, let's go get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nutrition! <laughs> <laughs>